and Happy New Year everyone. I'm Charlotte Martin. Thanks for joining us today. We'll bring you the latest local headlines and more. A summary of all the news around Flagler now. Extreme drought conditions prompt Flagler to extend a state of emergency. Georgia Aquarium buys marine lands dolphin attraction. And the controversy over the kill a mockingbird now has turned into a clash over policies and procedures. A company started by a graduate of Flagler Palm Coast High School will be getting some major television exposure on ABC in a few weeks. And the Hollingsworth Gallery is holding an opening reception for a new art show this Saturday. And we talked to the owner about the artists he's showcasing as well as his own experience as an artist. Also coming up this Saturday at the City Marketplace, the Flagler County Arts League's own Color Splash reception. There will be more on these stories after the break. Flagler County in late December declared a state of emergency and enacted a burn ban because of extreme drought conditions that have turned grounds and forests into tinder. This week, the Flagler County Commission extended the state of emergency indefinitely. The burn ban, as defined by Flagler County rules, outlaws all open flames but stops short of outlawing the use of outdoor barbecue grills. Very few areas in the United States are in this kind of drought conditions as Flagler County is facing right now. The drought index yesterday stood at 638 on a scale of 800 and anything over 600 on this index means the conditions for wildfires are optimized. And fires, once started, will spread very quickly. So hopefully we'll get some rain soon before the fire season starts this spring. If not, we will expect an active and dangerous wildfire season. Atlanta's Georgia Aquarium bought Marine Lands Dolphin Conservation Center from developer Jim Jacoby for $9.1 million just before the new year, 10 years after he acquired the property for $1.9 million. According to the new owners, the plan is to expand the aquarium's scientific and educational programs in the southeast. But from now on, Marine Land will become a non-profit corporation, which may ease some pressure on the park's financial challenges, but the non-profit status will hurt Marine Land as a town, at least initially as it will lose one of its main sources of property tax income. Last fall's controversy over the station to kill a mockingbird by the Flagler Palm Coast High School Drama Department took the school principal and the school board by surprise, in part because there was no procedure in place to deal with this issue. The district has since been working on just such a procedure as well as a new policy controlling how controversial plays are to be dealt with. Tuesday evening, the school board got its first look at the results, but it did not resolve the issue. There is a disagreement over the, whether a school principal should have the right to make a final decision when rejecting a play, or whether the principal can make that decision without a committee. School board member Colin Conklin objects to the decision being left in the hands of a single person. We'll let you know how the issue continues to unfold. In brighter news for the school board, one of its products, Kristen Hadid, who graduated from Flagler Palm Coast High School in 2006 and from the University of Florida last May, has just scored a big coup. Hadid owns Student Maid, a cleaning company in Gainesville that employs 30 to 40 students during the year, cleaning houses, apartments, and providing other services. Student Maid was chosen by ABC's television Extreme Makeover at Home Edition to be the cleaning crew of the upcoming taping of the show in Northeast Florida. The show is watched by some 10 million people, so Flagler County products will be getting some major exposure. The Hollingsworth Gallery of City Marketplace in Palm Coast is holding an opening reception for a new art show this Saturday, featuring Daytona Beach artist Beth Guerin. We talked to gallery owner and artist J.J. Graham about the show, where his work will also be featured. Try to have art out there. Some art, you know, I want people to be comfortable with, but I always want to have at least some things that challenge people. So, you know, they can expect to be challenged. I want this to be a place where people come for the unexpected. 
you know I want to have work here that people like but they don't know they like because they haven't seen it before I, I look at Beth's work and I love the way that she uses space I love the way she she uses the foreground the middle ground the background it, it, it's it's about dream it's it's about spirituality um, she's doing a lot of searching inside of herself um, I see a connection with animals, I see a connection with plants. Um, it's just very evolved work. Um, and she's, she's a very humble person. I don't think she realized how gifted she is. Um, I just like it. It's, you know, it's a little bit of surrealism. Um, she's a self-taught artist, which is very impressive because the design in these paintings is just amazing. And um, you know, I just I thought it, it would be interesting, and I hadn't really seen any work um, it was quite like what she was doing. And there's also this element of what I call um, the unspeakable or the unseen, which I find it very interesting when artists try to paint that. And I think it's the things that we sense and the things that we feel with our nervous system, but just aren't necessarily painted, you know, in black and white or color right in front of us. So. You know, I see her. I see in her that she's engaging her nervous system and her feelings and her dreams, and that's definitely where I'm coming from too. Even though we, our work is very different, there is that commonality. I think I'm inspired by the the process of of um, creating. I think that um, you know anyone that gets in the studio, it, it's there's this kind of energy that you feel there. That's it's to me, it's a form of meditation. It's a form of um, just uh, being open and and uh, it's traveling. It's um, you know I think of art as a journey, and I don't have a lot of money, and I would love to go see all these places. And you know, um, it's a way for me to travel in this two-dimensional space. I can paint my dreams. I can paint a forest. I can paint a trail and walk down it. Um, it's just, it's just a way for me to decipher you know things. I mean, not just not just images and not just experiences, but emotions and. Mm -hmm. And so it, it is my form of meditation. And when I work on a painting, I'm not just working on some object to sell. I'm working on myself, you know. So I like to think um, of my studio as where I go for church. And the Hollingswood Gallery also offers art classes for kids and inspires young minds. So how long have you been painting? About four months. Four months? Yeah. When did you start? I came to Gigi's class. And I just started after that. You just love it? Yeah, it's pretty fun. What, do you, what kind of colors do you use? A lot. A lot. <laughs> Mostly, like all of them. Just whatever I need. Do you use acrylic or oil? Acrylic. Yeah. Is it easier to find? Yeah, it's yeah. way easier. So what, when you paint, what inspires you? Do you already have like a vision of what you want to paint, or it just kind of comes as you go? It just comes as I go. I just imagine it in my mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, the city marketplace this Saturday is the Flagler County League's own color splash reception. Uh, we've been trying to have a show every month, and uh, our current show that will be opening on Friday is uh, Color Splash. And I haven't seen any of the work yet, but uh, it sure will be quite interesting everybody's interpretation of what that means. And uh, I tried to tell everybody that uh, it's not necessarily uh, bright colors, but certainly uh, a, a good use of colors. And um, so what I tried to do with this painting is to uh, use just uh, the two complementary colors of blue and yellow. And, uh, and of course the whole community is uh, invited to attend and uh, we have our openings. Uh, we coordinate with Hollingsworth Gallery so that we have openings on the same nights and uh, so you get to see two gallery shows instead of just one. And uh, it's worked out quite well for us. That was this week's headlines. Please join us every week for On Point with Flag Live. Find more details at flagonlive.com and keep an eye on the live wire. Thanks for tuning in with us today and I will see you back next week. Thank <laughs> you.